forever and always, my love. In this life and the next, I will always find you. I will always be with you. I will always be yours. And you, mine. Shadow, don't let her get to you. We can just fly to freedom before she has time to get her steel rangers to do anything. Also, the Shadow Talons know how to fight them. You don't have to talk to her and we can just leave. Aura said in a huff. Trying my best to hold back my anger at the threat of Sapphire made to my friends and my family. The broadcaster was still connected to Sapphire and she laughed through it. That thing can't get to freedom before I send word to my rangers. Trust me on that. Even if you could stop them, many will die before you can. Give me five minutes, I said, then disconnected the call before she could answer. Shadow, what are you doing? Or I asked, putting a hoof on my shoulder. I'm not running away. I'm so damn sick and tired of running away from these things. I'm going down there, and I'm finishing this bullshit with Sapphire. I don't know what's happened with her or why she's doing what she's doing, but she threatened our friends. Our family. No pony gets away with that shit. Not anymore, I said as I pulled on my duster that I'd taken off during the flight. She has too many troops down there, Shadow. You can't beat her, Solstice said. I don't need to beat her. I just need to outsmart her, I said as I readied my magic. I was feeling a little stronger with the help of those pills I'd gotten from Sheena. Shadow, Sunspot tried saying, but I cut her off and the others. Don't say anything. I'm doing this. Now, either you come help me, or don't bother following, I said before teleporting down to the surface. In a flash of red light, I was standing a few feet away from the death and destruction of the NLR camp. Sapphire was standing in the middle of it, her power armor gleaming in the dull light. Her helmet was off, and she looked different, which wasn't too strange for Sapphire. Since I'd met with her, I'd seen her have three different looks. The first time as a raider, with a dull brown mane and her coat color, which I couldn't make out under the grime. The second time, she had a green mane and a purplish coat with eyes that looked black. The last time, she was dressed like a raider again, only with a pink mane and red coat. She was a master of disguise herself. Now I think I was seeing the true Sapphire. With her helmet off, I could now see what I guessed was her. Her mane was a bright blue that matched her sapphire blue eyes. Her coat was a cream color with a few dark freckles around her nose. She looked a lot younger than the other times I'd seen her, maybe around Windthrasher's age, whereas before she looked a few years younger than Mom. But more than anything I noticed about this mare was that she gave off an essence of power. She looked like what an elder of the Steel Rangers should. She reminded me of box tape in that way. He was kind, yes, but he also had the look and feel of a leader. I could see now why they chose her to be the elder. That was fast. I'm glad to see that you came to talk to me. It's the first smart thing I think you've done so far, Shadow, Sapphire said as she started walking towards me, the hooves of her power armor clunking with each step. If you want to talk, then get the hell out of that power armor, I said, doing my best to keep a calm voice. She cocked her head at me. Why would I do that? Because you said you want to talk like adults? Well, act like one and don't hide behind your tech, I replied. She let out an annoyed sigh. Then the power armor opened and she stepped out. She only wore a vest showing her rank as an elder. It was the first time I'd seen her cutie mark. There was five sapphires in a circle, each one a different color, one blue, then pink, yellow, black, and light green. She looked at her cutie mark where I was staring, then snickered, saying, Like my cutie mark? It's very fitting to my special talent, you know. Did you know that a sapphire can come in many different colors? Just like me. I've seen how well you can disguise yourself, so I get it. But I'm not here to talk about your cutie mark. I'm here to find out what the hell happened to make you do what you were doing. Why the hell did you kill El Elder Apple Slice? Why were you hunting the Mark Twos? And why the hell do you think I killed Box Tape? I yelled, my magic sparking from the tip of my horn. 
Temper, Shadow. We don't want that thing getting out of you again. The reports I have about the last time she was free were frightening, to say the least. Poor Stable 28. What a shame, she said with a chuckle. Don't talk about my home, I yelled. Another spark of magic coming off my horn. Fine. But still, watch the temper or I'll have my rangers kill you. I don't have all day to listen to your whining, she said, then came closer. To answer your last question, I don't think you killed Boxtape yourself. No. But I do believe that you're the reason he's dead. You were working with Elder Wolfsbane. That's why he was in Cartwheel. I had nothing to do with that. Yes, I met with him two days after my stable was attacked, and I was going to work with him so I could get something from him. But instead, I worked against him and made sure he couldn't get into Stable twenty er, 97 back in the Mill City Wasteland. I said. Oh, I know that too. And that's why he went to Cartwheel, like I said. He was hunting you after you betrayed him. Because of that, Box Tape was forced to help you when you were caught. Because that's the kind stallion he was. He helped ponies who needed him. Because he... Of that he's dead. And you're still alive. Sapphire said. I could see the rage being held back in her eyes. Yeah, he did save me. But he did it because he cared about me like a granddaughter. Because his daughter raised me. Don't take that away from him, I said. He saved a monster. He died for a fucking monster, she yelled, her anger slipping its leash at least. I let a little grin come to my face as I said, Yeah. He did. A monster who's the only pony that can stop what's coming. A monster who's doing her best to save ponies around here, unlike you. A cold rage came to those deep sapphire eyes, as she said, You're not the only pony who knows how to stop that creature inside you, Shadow. Elder Applejam did, too. That took me by surprise. What are you talking about? Elder Applejam didn't know anything about what's inside me. He died long after my mom took us to Stable 28. Her cocky grin came back. Yeah, for almost a year he still ran Steel Rangers. And that's until he was killed by Cracker Jack. Do you know what he was doing the entire year your mother and you were in that stable? How would I know? I didn't even know who I was back then. I said, rolling my eyes. He was keeping in direct communication with Grimm. He was looking into the other Mark IIs and all the files your mother left him with when she went to go fix you. Files that he hid away before his death, leaving them in a place where only Grimm could find them when she escaped. He knew what Stargazer was, what it was meant to do, and what it would power someday. He also had notes on that thing inside of you, and how to kill her if she ever found a body, Sapphire said. If that's true, then how do you know any of this? I asked. He left notes on his old terminal. He tried to hide that too, knowing his daughter would want them if he passed away. He didn't want her to have power, you see. He knew where Alpha Slice's allegiances lied. I found them with some of my grandfather's old things, not long after you left the bunker, and I learned a lot. For example, all it'd take to kill a thing inside of you is to kill you. Or if her power gets too strong, then a revolver known as Demon Slayer can be used. A revolver enchanted by Luna herself she said as she took another step closer. I just rolled my eyes. Old news. So what? You know how to kill Aquila, big whoop. Guess what? It doesn't matter. Because a pony like you doesn't have what it takes to kill her. She destroyed a stable in the better part of an hour. Your rangers might be strong, but you can't stop her. Only I can. To my surprise, Sapphire smiled. You have a point there. I know I can't kill her. Not yet. But it's not just because she's strong. It's because she's still able to pull power from one of the projects. That's why I'm hunting for the other Mark II. Because once I get them, I can unlock the project and make it self-destruct. Whatever project was made after her is slowly pulling small trickles of power through it to feed into her. And that couldn't be true. Falling Shadows was locked down fully. I hadn't ever been activated. Hell, it hadn't even been turned on once, I think. 
But if that was true, it would explain why Aquila was getting stronger. It couldn't just be from her feeding on my power. If that was true, then I had no choice. I had to find a way to destroy it. I sighed, then looked back at Sapphire. What does any of this have to do with me? Also, why would you even tell me this? You know that she can hear everything I can, right? Her eyes had a hint of fear in them at that moment, before she hid the emotion again. I didn't, but it doesn't matter. Once I destroy Fong Shadows, Aquila will have her power stopped, and the backlash of power will make her powerless. Just long enough to be killed. And that's why I'm doing the shadow. I'm doing it to stop you. You mean, stop her? Not me? She might live in my body, but Aquila isn't me. And as far as the Mark II goes, getting luck, getting mine on the other, because I'm not going down without a fight, and you might have fifty or so steel rangers with you even now. My friends can still kill all of them before you even have a chance to take me down, I said, pointing a hoop over the airship. For even from way down on the ground, Sapphire could see the massive plasma cannons pointing down at them all. She growled a little. I may not be able to take it now, but I will soon. You can't always hide behind your friend, Shadow. I interrupted her. Listen, Sapphire, before you killed the Elder, I thought of you as a friend. You saved my life when I first escaped the stable, when you could have just let me die and taken the Mark II for yourself, but you didn't. That's the mare I called a friend. Even now, after you killed a good pony like Apple Slice, yeah, you think she wasn't a trustworthy pony, and I get that. She did some stupid things to get the Mark II, you can have now, but she just did what a leader would do, made hard choices. The mare you used to be is the only reason I came down here to talk instead of killing you with those cannons. It's also my repayment for the life debt that I owed you. She sneered, making her normally pretty face go ugly. <laughs> you talk like a fucking griffin. I smiled at that. Maybe deep down I really am. Who knows? But I'd rather live my life by the code of the griffins rather than some fucked up ideals of the steel rangers. Another flash of anger emerged from her. You have no idea what the true cause of the steel rangers is. As for Elder Apple Slice, do you really want to know why she's dead? Why I carved traitor into her flesh? I'll tell you. It's because she was the one who told Elder Whoopsbane to have her father killed. Even worse, she was the one who killed Elder Tap, my grandfather. She's been working with Wolfsbane since he was still a knight. She's also the one who told him where to find your old stable. Who told him you have the mark too and the one who hired griffins to go after that bat pony friend of yours. So you can thank me, because I'm the one who put a stop to her bullshit. I was the one who saved you and your friends from her madness. She took a breath and continued. When I did all of that, I still didn't understand what you were or what was inside you. When I killed Apple Slice, I did it to protect the filly I had faith in. Even after you destroyed a city, I still had faith in you. The great courier, the one who came to save new Pegasus from the darkness. I did it for you. Now I wish I would have just let you die in that fucking raider camp. Sometimes I wish you would have too. Maybe then I wouldn't have to deal with Aquila. But the past can't be changed. I am what I am, and no pony can change that. I said, and then something she said hit me. What do you mean Apple Slice worked with Wolfsbane? She grinned. That's right. Those two are partners. That's why your mother left the Steel Rangers long ago. She found out and made sure she got as far away from the Elder as she could. That's why Apple Slice let you into the bunker, and why she did what she could to earn your trust. She wanted you to find the rest of your mother's research so she could give it to Wolfsbane. She was using you from the beginning. I don't believe that. She was good, I know it. I said, pulling out my magic again. She was a traitor, a liar, and even more, she was a pathetic excuse for a leader, she said. And you're so much better? From what I can tell, you're worse, I yelled. Why? Because I'm taking back the territory we used to hold before my grandfather died? Or because I'm defending my soldiers from the NLR, who shoot on sight when they see a Steel Ranger? Tell me, Shadow. What do you really know about the NLR or other ponies who have taken control around New Pegasus since the Steel Rangers fell from power? She asked, starting to walk around me. You can't. 
because as much as you want to preach about how noble and great you are, you don't know New Pegasus like I do. When my grandfather ran things around here, the land was a lot nicer. Ponies weren't scared of raiders, the fiends. They didn't have to worry about making trips through a place like Cartwheel or Appleton. Shut up, I said as I shook with rage. I know more about the ponies around here than you think. I wasn't the one who hid in a bunker for years. It wasn't my fault this area went to shit. No, that was the Steel Rangers. But you go around talking about the NLR and other ponies who are trying to make a difference around here. At least they're trying to do something, like fighting the Romans. Funny you should bring up the Romans. Because if you think the NLR are here to fight them, then you'd be wrong. Sapphire said with a laugh, still slowly walking a circle around me. And they're trying to turn the wasteland back into what it was when Luna was alive. Their leader wants to make this into a new Equestria, forming it to fit what they want, what they think Luna wanted. So they go around, taking land and territory from other ponies and set it up in their own laws and rules. The only reason they're at war with the Romans is because they're interfering with that dream. If it wasn't for that zebra who runs the Romans, the NLR would have taken a lot more than they already have. At least they're helping ponies, I yelled. They don't go around hurting innocent ponies like the Steel Rangers. She froze at that. I haven't hurt a single innocent pony in my life, Shadow. I follow the old ways of the Steel Rangers. We're here to protect the ponies in this land, even if it's from themselves. Like taking their tech? How does that help them? I asked. We take it to keep it from hurting others or themselves. Most of the tech from the war was created because of the Ministry of Wartime Technologies. Applejack was the one who created the Steel Rangers. She was the one who ran the MWT. And from her dream, we do what we must, Sapphire said. From what I've seen, a good amount of tech in the wasteland was made by Stable Tech, not the MWT. Like the Mark IIs, for example. They don't belong to any of you Steel Rangers, I said. Apple Bloom was Applejack's younger sister, so anything she created is also ours. Even if you don't see it that way, it's still our job to protect the ponies in the wasteland from themselves, and from ponies like Apple Slice. So why don't you get off your high horse and see things for how they are? Grow the fuck up, she said, turning to face me. How's this going for growing up? Get the fuck out of this area and go back to your bunker. Never bother us again. If you don't do that, then I'll make my life's mission to destroy all of you, I said. Sapphire sighed and said, I really didn't want to do this, Shadow, but you've left me with no choice. You're becoming a pain in my ass, and I'm done trying to keep you out of danger. She looked back at her rangers. I'm sorry I've been keeping all of this from you, but I saw Shadow as a friend that we could help and save. But sadly, I can't. She's too far gone. What are you doing? I asked. As I did, I wondered where Aura and Solstice were. I thought they would have followed me down here. Shadow stars from the Enclave, a runaway child of the High Council Pony Nightshade, and Grim, the mayor who betrayed us years ago. What do we do to those who are of the Enclave, or traitors? She asked. They all responded at once. We end them. I felt my legs go weak as a mare I once thought of as a friend just sentenced me to execution. I pulled on what magic I'd been able to build back up over the last couple of days, readying my expulsion spell. I haven't been in the Enclave for twelve years. She turned her back towards me. Once a cob dweller, always a cloud dweller. Her ranger started to ready their weapons, but I didn't even give them a chance to attack. I looked right into Starfire's eyes and said, It's time you pay for what you've been doing. I cast my expulsion spell. A look of shock came to Sapphire's face as the magic blasted out of me. For only a second, that is. Right as I fired the spell, I felt a small flutter of my horn, followed by a strange laughing in my head as the spell failed. Kind of. Instead of an intense blast of magic blasting into Sapphire, I shot a rainbow into her face. A fucking... Rainbow. 
A rainbow made of only of light, nothing more. It was like a child using a flashlight to play a game with a friend. The killing joke had done something to me. A deadly joke. They took only my offensive spell and made it into a fucking cliché. Sapphire started to laugh, saying, Oh, now that was a good one. What are you going to do next? Try and hug me to death? Pathetic unicorn. You don't even know how your spells work. I might as well be eating birthday cake while you're trying to kill me. I couldn't let this get me down. I wasn't going to die here because of some stupid plant. I used my magic to pull my plasma rifle off my back and named it at Sapphire. If my light display won't work, how about this baby? Her eyes went dead at the sight of the weapon. They went wider as I cranked the charge up to full. I smiled as I fired and took aim. She tried to dart for her armor, but she wasn't going to be fast enough. But apparently one of her rangers was. A power-armored body jumped in front of the blast of green glue and took the blast right to his chest. He screamed as the plasma blasted through his armor, throwing him back as his armor began to dissolve. I checked the charge on the small meter of the back of the rifle, and that fully powered blast took almost half the magical gem cartridge. I didn't have a lot of ammo for this weapon right now, so I couldn't use it at full blast every time. I cursed and charged toward the down to 50%, and started to fire. Right as the rest of the rangers took aim at me, I felt a small tug in my mind. The first time since I woke up to the fact that I felt Aquila's presence. She didn't say anything, but I could feel her trying to force me to cast a spell. She shoved the knowledge into my head, giving me no choice but to accept it. She was still powerful enough to take that much control, and for once I didn't mind, because it was a barrier spell. I pulled on my magic again, hoping to the goddesses that the killing joke hadn't messed with all of my magic to cast. It was just in time. Bullets and magical energy slammed into the barrier. Each hit pulled at my mind, forcing me to use more of my small magic to keep from keep the spell going. Small cracks started to form, but it didn't need it to last long. I dodged and rolled, letting the barrier fall as I entered Sats and took aim again. One of the steel rangers went down as the still powerful rifle burned a hole through a small visor. He screamed for only a moment as he died. More shots came at me, so I teleported out of the way of them. Knowing the tax on my magic would be a lot, but better than being shot. I peered at the sight of a small group of rangers and opened fire. Two went down after two shots. A third tried to duck out of the way, only to find my other surprise waiting for her. Misery held in my magical grip. Came stabbing as she rolled right into her visor. It sank down to the hilt the last third of the blade sticking out the back of her helmet, blood dripping down it like rain. I ripped Misery out and swung it around, slicing off the head of another ranger with my plas as my plasma rifle came down and dissolved a fleeing scribe. A shot rang out, but I already put the barrier spell back up and turned towards more rangers coming after me. I swapped the plasma rifle out for my favorite gun, Dreamwalker as it flowed out of the holster, just under my duster, and gleamed in the dim light coming out from the bitter cow above. Once again, I took aim, dropping the spell as I moved to one side and fired. The bark of Dreamwalker was like music to my ears, as the fifty caliber AP round ripped through the rangers like they were wrapped in tinfoil. I dodged another steel ranger who tried to take my head off with a large cannon-like gun mounted on his back, then twisted around and fired Dreamwalker. He went down as I reloaded then switched back to Misery as another ranger came for me. This one was faster than the rest of his companions I'd killed so far. He ducked under Misery, then brought a foreleg up and slammed it in my chest. I flew back, almost loading, losing hold of Dreamwalker and Misery. I landed in the dirt, thanking Wingnut for making my barding so strong. There was a small dent in the metal chest plate. I could tell I was going to have a nasty bruise tomorrow, but I was alive for now. I took a few deep breaths, then aimed with Dreamwalker, as the large power-armored pony charged at me. A Gatling gun started to fire. I brought up the spell again, just managing to hold off his attack as I took the rest of the steps back, hoping he'd run out of bullets before I ran out of magic. Where the hell was Solstice or Aura, or the rest of the Bitter Cob for that matter? There's no way they would just let me take on as many Steel Rangers at once. Even worse, where did Sapphire go? 
I got an answer to both questions a moment later. Sapphire was back in her power armor and aiming her rifle up at something in the distance. At the same moment, I noticed that an explosion of plasma vaporized a ranger trying to take me out with his cannon. I looked up just in time to see none other than Captain Gunny laughing his ass off while taking aim with a large plasma cannon mounted on his ship. Then another sound broke into the night. The battle cries of griffins as they came into view in the dark sky. V and Fletch leading them. Twenty griffins behind them and two pegasi I knew all too well. Stardust and Wind Thrasher. My friends coming to help. But how'd they know I was in trouble? Never mind that. What matters was that they were here. More steel rangers seemed to materialize out of nowhere. The large guns taking aim at the griffins and my friends. For a moment, I thought I'd have to watch my friends fall from the sky. Luckily, I didn't as the steel rangers opened fire. V gave off a command and they all scattered into groups of two and started going right for the steel rangers. Stardust flew down towards me, a large rifle taking aim at some rangers that were heading this way. There was a boom that made the night sky echo as his rifle hurled a bullet through power armor like it was sheets of paper. The sound of the rifle was familiar, like Stardust had wraiths. AMR. Wind Thrasher landed next to me and turned towards more steel rangers and screamed. Her voice was powerful, but the power armor protected the rangers somewhat from her deadly voice. However, it did make them slow down and groan in pain, giving Aura enough time to land and open fire with the battle saddle. The rifles on her battle saddle weren't too powerful, but it was enough to make them step back, right where Fletch was waiting with a pulse grenade. The flash of blue stopped them in their tracks, trapping them inside their dead armor. I swapped Dreamwalker out for the plasma rifle again, yelling, Try not to kill them all. We need to take down Sapphire. She's the one leading this whole operation. Wind Thrasher nodded, taking off to join Stardust, who was heading towards another group of rangers. Fletch gave me a salute, then took off after them. Aura flew over to me. Clever idea keeping them distracted long enough for Solstice to get a hold of the Shadow Talons. I wasn't really thinking about that, but at least it worked out in the end. How many are left? Also, have you seen Sapphire? I asked. She's fighting closer to camp with a few of her high-ranking paladins, Aura said, pointing to her direction with a hoof. I could just make out Solstice and the twins fighting ten power-armored ponies. I looked back at Aura, saying, Let's go help them. We can't stand here and talk forever. I'll do my best, she said and flew off. I pulled out my magic again as we ran towards them. Right now, I would have been a great time to use my expulsion spell, but I think another rainbow show wouldn't do me much good. So I reached into my saddlebags and pulled out a spark grenade. I watched as Solstice stove down, blasting her energy weapons rapidly at the ranger. Right as she landed, she swung around and bucked him in the chest. I could hear the crunch and something breaking as the stallion was launched back a couple of meters. Pegasus' power armor might not be as strong as Steel Ranger armor, but it still packed a powerful punch. Aura got to the others before I did and started opening fire on two knights who came to help their elder. I aimed for Sapphire, whose armor was easy to make out compared to the rest. I pulled the pin on the spark grenade and yelled, Time to finish this Sapphire! I threw the grenade with all the force I could muster, with the limited amount of magic I still had. It was right then that I saw the mistake I'd made, by warning Sapphire. Her armor opened just in time as the spark grenade went off. The armor died, but it was most of the way open, and Sapphire was able to back out of it. You're going to need to find a better trick than that if you want to stop me, Shadow, she hissed. It was then that the five others managed to escape their armor before the spark grenade went off. An older mare came to stand next to an elder, saying, The griffins were too prepared. We can't fight them for much longer. Yes, Noodle Cup. Let's deal with Shadow first. Then be gone from this place, Sapphire said, pulling a plasma rifle out of his holster on her back. I had no idea how she was keeping that on with the armor she was wearing. She pointed at me, saying around the bit, I'm done with this game, Shadow. Surrender now or all of your friends will die, and so will you. I already had my rifle held in my magical grip, as I said, no chance, Sapphire. You're going to pay for everything you did. To my shock, Noodle Cup spoke. Sapphire didn't kill Elder Apple Slice. I did. 
I almost lost the grip I had on my rifle, as I said. What? But... Quiet, Noodle. Sapphire ordered. No. I'm not going to keep hiding the truth so you can protect me, Elder. This was my fault. And as I said, we can't hold out forever. Get the rest of, out of here and back to the bunker, she said. I give the orders around here, Noodle, Sapphire said, but her face didn't look angry. It looked scared. Don't. Noodle Cup, a plain-looking mare with a milky tan coat and dull orange mane, shook her head. Ignored the rifle I had pointed right at them and said to Sapphire, If you fall, the quest to finish off that project dies with you. Get back to the bunker and lay low for now. I'll get you the time you need. I'm not letting any of you leave, I said, ready to fire as soon as either of them tried to attack. Noodle Cup looked at the other rangers, saying, Get our elder out of here and back to the base. That's in order. The other four nodded in unison, saying, Ad Victorium! Sapphire was pulled away, a look of anger and shock on her face, but she let the others lead her away as Noodle Cup stepped forward in the way of my shot, saying, Courier, I understand your anger towards Sapphire for what you think she did. I'm here to fix that mistake. Like I said before, I is the one who killed our last elder, and for good reason. I was stunned for a moment, Watching as Sapphire started to struggle to get away until one of her own rangers knocked her out and put her on their back. Laura made a move to go after them, but as quick as a snake, Noodle Cup pulled out a simple looking pistol and fired at Aura, missing her by a hair. I'm not letting any of you get away, I said again. You're here for revenge on a mare you cared for. That I know. Planting her hooves as she holstered a pistol again. Call off your friends and the griffins, and we can finish this here and now. If you are fast enough to kill me, then you might be able to catch with the rest of the rangers who escaped. If not, then we'll fight till there are none of us left. We can't win right now, but we can take a lot of you down before our dying breath. So what'll it be? A one with on one with me, or a chance at watching those you care about die? Shadow, I heard Windthrasher say. I turned towards her and said, Don't try to stop me. I can take her. Windthrasher walked closer and stared at Noodle Cup as she asked, I have a question for her first. Then she focused her attention on Noodle Cup. Who called for the attack on the NLR camp? Whose idea was it to threaten Trotston? Noodle Cup looked back at Windthrasher, then answered, Sapphire made the call, but the idea for both was mine. Why do you care, anyway? The NLR Rangers weren't much of a loss. As for Trotston, they were hoarding tech that belonged to us. When we were finished taking back that Mark II from the Philly, as we know has it, we planned taking down Trotston, too. That city should never have been able to carry on the way it has. I felt a stabbing pain in my heart, as Windthrasher said. There was an older pony who was just transferred here named Sergeant Quickdraw. He was my friend. He helped me when most ponies wouldn't. And now he's dead. None of the ponies here survived. Now step away before I kill you. I have business with the courier, Noodle Cup said, her eyes going back to mine. As I was saying, I knew as soon as Windthrasher said something about Quickdraw dying, the way Noodle Cup brushed it off like it was no big deal, like that, she was dead. I liked Quick Draw when I met him. He helped me too, and was the reason Windthrasher was here. His death was like hearing about Stable 28 all over again. Even worse, Noodle, Tr Noodle Cup had threatened Trotston, Windthrasher's home, in a way. The ponies who once were part of Stable 9 meant a great deal to her. If I didn't kill Noodle Cup and the other Steel Rangers, I knew she would. All this went through my head in a second as Windthrasher interrupted Noodle Cup, saying, Everyone stand down. I'm taking this one myself. Let the others run away like a bunch of cowards. Noodle Cup smiled, then said, I'm not here to fight a freak like you. Windthrasher, calm down, I said as everyone pulled back, letting the ten or so rangers let the live run. 
I could see her eyes turn red as she hissed. You lost the right to tell me what to do, Shadow, when you lied to me. Now back off and let me deal with her. Stardust came over to stand next to me, saying, Wind Thrasher, please. You know you can't do this. Dr. Gauze said you can't let your anger get the best of you. Not until he's finished with the serum. Wind Thrasher flapped her head towards me, and I saw her eyes flash gold for a moment as she let out a scream so high that my ears couldn't pick it up. The effect it had, however, was noticeable right away. Both my body and Stardust's fell to the ground along with a few others who were within its range. I couldn't do anything, but as I watched as Wind Thrasher turned her glowing red eyes back to the Noodle Cup. You killed my friends. You threatened my old home. You Steel Rangers took something that belonged to Stable Nine, which my mother gave her life to protect. You've been going around attacking ponies and taking what's theirs, all because you think you have the right to do so. Well, I'm here to tell you differently, she said as she bore her fangs. Noodle Cup, to her credit, didn't even bat an eye as she said, Who are you, anyway? Why should you care so much about Stable Nine or Trotsky? From the intel we have on you, you're just a killing joke victim gone wrong. A low growl came out of Wind Thrasher as she said, I'm the daughter of the last overmare of Stable Nine. My name is Wind Thrasher. And I'm not a mistake or a victim of a stupid plant. I'm a monster created for one purpose. Noodle Cop just rolled her eyes. And what's that? Slaughter! She said, and in a flash, Wind Thrasher attacked. Before Noodle Cup could react, Wind Thrasher was sinking her fangs into the mare's shoulder. However, she was able to keep her head and slam a hoof into Wind Thrasher's face, knocking her off. Wind Thrasher flipped around and attacked again, an insane scream coming out of her muzzle. I saw Noodle Cup wince in pain as the powerful voice hit her, but she managed to limp out of the way with her pistol and fired three shots. Wind Thrasher took the blows right to her chest and didn't go down. They just bounced right off her scales, ricocheting to each side of her. Wind Thrasher then dodged a fourth shot and landed a solid blow against Noodle Cup's face, throwing her back. She grinned, her bloody flangs and greaming as she said, You'll need something stronger than that to pierce my hide. Those were AP rounds, Noodle Cup said, a hint of fear showing in her voice and on her face as she tried to fire again. Wind Thrasher walked slowly towards her, saying, My chest and stomach are covered in dragon scales. No bullets can break them. Most spells bounce off. And they can take a hit from most energy weapons. Wind Thrasher got right in Noodle Cup's face. If you want me dead, you're gonna have to go for a headshot. I can see the pistol in Noodle Cup's muzzle shaking as her eyes widened and taking in the monstrous pony. Her whole body shivered as the fear pushed through her. The pistol fell from her lips as she tried to say, I, I, I don't under... What don't you understand? Huh? What don't you understand? Wind Thrasher taunted. How can something like you exist? Noodle Cup asked. Wind Thrasher opened her muzzle, blood dripping from her fangs as she said, Easy. Through a lot of pain, knowledge, and science. I'm the product of the technology and magic ponies like you created. I have to fight every minute of my pathetic life to keep myself from feeding on my friends, on the ponies I meet, on everything with a pulse. It's a niche I can't scratch, a chill I can't warm, a river of pain I can't dam up. I hate every moment of it, and yet at the same time, I love it. Stardust struggled to get back to his hooves, his muzzle pulling a strange-looking gun out of his side holster. It was silver with an oddly large barrel, with only a small handle and trigger just large enough to be held in the pony's muzzle. As he got up slowly, fighting the effects of Wind Thrasher's strange new ability, he said, Wind Thrasher, stop! Please! She opened her muzzle wider and started to move her head towards Noodle Cup's exposed throat. I did my best to fight the effects too, my body feeling like I was trying to trot through a marsh. Wind Thrasher, stop! 
She ignored us, her eyes glowing brighter as she brought her muzzle down. Right before her muzzle closed around Noodle Cup's throat, a small silver dart sank into her flank, right in the middle of her cutie mark. Her head shot up, and she whipped around to look at Stardust. For a moment, she looked ready to kill him. Then the red glow left her eyes, returning to their normal yellow hue. She smiled a little, saying, Thank you, Stardust. Then she fell to the ground. As soon as she was down, the power holding me back seemed to break, and I was able to move again. Stardust ran over to her, ignoring the scared-looking steel ranger, who still looked confused on what had happened. He pulled her into her forelegs, hugged her tight. I thought I lost you for a second there. Don't scare me like that again. I was too busy looking at Stardust holding Windthrasher like she was his. I'd never seen a reaction like that from my friend before. I was so fixated on them that I didn't see Noodle Cup get back to her hooves, pick up the pistol, and say, Thank you, Pegasus. You made this a lot easier. Stardust looked back at her right as Noodle Cup pointed the pistol at Wind Thrasher's head. She looked like she just won some kind of prize as she started to pull the trigger. That was until Dreamwalker swung and a hole appeared in her chest, just missing her heart. She looked up at me, shock on her face at the sight of me, smoke coming out of the barrel of Dreamwalker. She once again dropped the pistol from her muzzle, her eyes locked onto mine. Then, as if in slow motion, Noodle Cup fell to the side. Stardust watched Noodle Cup fall and said, Shadow, you saved us. I walked over towards him, keeping my eyes on Noodle Cup, who was still breathing. Her breaths were shallow and pained, but still there. As I passed by Windthrasher and Stardust, I said, Get her away from here. I'll finish this. It's about time I helped you guys instead of you helping me. Shadow, she's down. You don't need to... Stardust said. I interrupted. Get back, Stardust. Then I looked at the couple of Steel Rangers who hadn't fled yet, and said, I have a message for every Steel Ranger who tries to come into the new Pegasus territory. I pointed Dreamwalker at a still gasping Noodle Cup. This will be the result of any of you who think you can pillage and take whatever you want from whoever you want, all because it happens to be technology. I'm the Courier. And I will protect this land with not just my allies, but with my life. Please, Shadowstar, you need to know the truth about everything. Please, Sapphire, she's not, Noodle Cup said between breaths. I didn't let her finish. I was sick of the bullshit, the lies, sick of everything. I fired a single shot between Noodle Cup's eyes. Blood sprayed slowly over my face, over my armor, over my chest onto my hooves, and my Mark II. It was as if I'd written a declaration of war with the blood of my enemy. I slowly reloaded Dreamwalker, then holstered it and pulled out Misery. Then I started to advance towards the two stallions that were left, still in their power armor. As I walked, I held Misery out to my side with my magical grip. I am Shadowstar the Courier of the Marave. This is my territory now, and the Steel Rangers are no longer welcome. If I find any of your kind within my borders again, I'll make sure that you all die. Trust me, with the help of the allies that I've made, we can take you all on. I'm a friend of the NLR, the Strip, Freedom, the Annihilators, and more. I'm the daughter of the leader of Stratus and Nimbus. My partner leads the Shadow Talons. Frosty Summit, run by Alicorns, are also allies of mine. So don't fuck with me or any pony that calls me a friend, ever again. Do you understand me? For a full minute, they just stared at me. Then one on my left started to laugh. He just kept on laughing, almost bending over, as if what I had said was the funniest thing they'd ever heard. Then he said, It's so funny you think you have the power to take on the Steel Rangers. You're nothing but a stupid, weak, pathetic filly. Goddesses, it's even better that you think because you're Enclave that we should fear you. Guess what, Courier? Fuck you. By the time he said the last two words, I was only a couple of meters away. Those were the last words he'd said as Misery swung through the air. The enchanted blade, once again, didn't disappoint me as the stallion's head was separated from his body. 
His helmet, with his head still in it, arced through the air and thumped to the ground next to his friend, a spray of blood following the body before it fell to the ground. His final words and laugh still echoing off the stone around us. The blood covered me as I turned my eyes forward towards the other fun, who had taken a few steps back. He stuttered. What the hell are you? I'm just your average, everyday package courier, I said, slowly walking towards him, the blood of his friend dripping off misery. The glow of its edge emitted some light, casting the dark silhouette over my face. I came face to face with his visor, and gave my best Aquila grin. Run away, and tell Sapphire she's next.